right, I'm going to call this meeting to order. And our first order of business uh, is to review and approve the minutes from August 31st. I would move approval of the minutes of August 31st. I would second that. OK. Any discussion? Um, I um, believe that we are required to say why we go into executive session. Yes. And we began with executive session, and those minutes don't say the purpose of it. So oh. in the very start of those minutes, mm, right. um, I think we just need to add to discuss a personnel matter. That's a good point. Yes. Good catch. Any more discussion? All right. So with that uh, addition, addition uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> all right. Uh, we go on to uh, the warrants for payment. We have warrant six, six P. We have um, for the capital fund, uh, and we have the recreation board. I'll move we approve for payment warrant six, warrant six P, capital fund number one, and recreation board number one. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? All right, the warrant six is for $683,277.33, and of that, uh, payment going to Brattleboro Union High School is for $544,695. We have 20, almost $27,000 for crushing gravel. Uh, we have the town appropriations. <clears throat> so uh, we're in town meeting. Uh, we agreed to, uh, well, uh, the Conservation Commission, the Planning Commission, all, all the town boards uh, are getting their appropriations. The library is getting a portion of their uh, annual uh, budget from the town. Uh, Fisher and Fisher have a bill for the recent tax sale, and then we had uh, Green Mountain Power and a few other uh, items. Any more discussion on those? Um, I could say the capital fund is eighty-two thousand uh, two hundred thirteen dollars, and that's for the new truck. Kevin Jesse. Yep. Okay. You happy with the, this truck? So far, good. Uh, and the recreation board, there was a soccer tournament, and that was for $300. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, any, uh, this is recognition of visitors, public comments. If you aren't on the agenda, this is your chance. Okay. And then, Let's move on to the road foreman's report. Lee Chamberlain, our road foreman is here. Okay. Um, I noticed, do we want to do the Wickerby Hill yeah. first? Let's, yes, let's do that. Since it's, it's first on the list. Yep. Do we need to? Yeah, you need to start. Okay. So, yeah. So for the Whitby Hills, so Lee and I went up there. Boy, I need these glasses a lot. <laughs> um, on the seventh, we went. We went back there. There was so I, there's the three forms that are required. I think this um, this data we had last week took care of two of those forms that we had to do. So one of them was this one, which is called the traffic engineering report for a speed limit study. On a traffic a, what report? Uh, traffic engineering report. Engineering. They're all kind of called that same thing. Okay. I believe. But um, this one basically it's asking for road characteristics, you know, lane, shoulder, sidewalk, curbing, things that really don't apply up to Whitby Hill. Uh, alignment uh, as far as curves, uh, degree, grade, passing, things like that. <coughs> well, uh, it's really not designed, I don't think, for a road quite like Whitby Hill. So, um, so Lee and I went up there on the seventh, and we started right where um, Bear Hill. Yes, that road color. Yeah. So we're Bear Hill. You come off, you know, Route 30, 
you know, you get Sticky Brook, but you bear to the left. Bear Hill goes to the right, and then um, Wickby begins there. And it's essentially an even mile from where it begins to the Broad Road Town Line. Hmm. So what we did is we broke um, we broke that into thirds, and this is running from north to south. We broke it into thirds. Um, and the, the uh, section one, you know, point three miles, and, and this was based on the characteristics. We kind of said, okay, this is sort of similar, changes a little bit here. So section one, uh, three tenths of a mile, the, the grade varied from two degrees to nine degrees of slope, you know, going up, and up the hill, uh, roughly a 14 foot wide. And uh, clearly, you know, we drove it twice, I think, together, and then I went back. Clearly, you know, 25 was, a, was about where you want. I wouldn't have gone any much faster than that. You know, there's some, probably seasonally how the road gets taken care of too, but it's, it has some narrow points there. Section two, uh, it's kind of as you peek up, there's like a granite marker on the side of the road. It, um, uh, three tenths of a mile as well. It had a one to three degree slope, uh, roughly about 16 feet wide. And I'd say our, our average comfortable driving speed was equal to or less than 30 miles an hour. So, and then section three, the last section going up there, we took that as a point .4. Um, and, I'll, and I'll back up, really the residential section kind of starts with section two. The first part, there's nothing on the road up there. Uh, point four, a one to three degree slope, 15 feet wide. And we said, you know, roughly, it, essentially we're doing what these guys say. We're doing 30 miles an hour. I'm comfortable doing 30 miles an hour. Um, now on that section, there's one on section two, there's one where the house really comes right in on the road. So there's, and there's a driveway. Uh, I went back up and I, I, you know, I'm sure anybody can count these a little differently. Um, so as you're, um, I think I had like five driveways or drives off the left side, seven off the right side. And you can, depends how you want to count the houses. You know, there's houses set back. I didn't really count those, but there's like five houses on the right. Um, and I think six were on the left. Um, so that is the area where it really becomes the residential section. For the, the last <coughs> seven tenths of a mile. Um, so, I guess, Mike, do you have anything to no, add? No, that's going to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, I guess my thoughts on this all said and done changed from the beginning, or you know, I was more like leave it alone. But I think there's 25 is clearly a good speed going up the hill, uh, 30 probably is not an issue on the rest of it. But when you start factoring into the number of houses that are on the side of the road, you know, the driveways that are really coming off, you know, I don't think there's any blind curves or anything. And then when you kind of take into consideration um, the, uh, um, it's not a consistent character to the road either, various. And then the number of drives, and then when you just say, you come off Route 30, you see a 25 mile an hour sign, <coughs> I'm almost like, why change it? For such a small period of time, so I mean, I think based on that and, and our study, um, well, I don't know. Do you want a recommendation? Or do you, or I think twenty-five. I, I, I'm in suspense here. I'm for you to <laughs> I think twenty-five is a, is a fair speed. Now, um, I think that's a fair speed to put on that road for consistency throughout the, the road. You know, now. In, in our lifetimes, will anybody ever get a speeding ticket on that road? I, I probably not. I don't know, but um, but I, I don't think we would be. You know, when it talks about towns tend to put speed limits too low, I don't think we're we're forcing drivers to become you know non whatever break the speed limit because we're putting it too low. I think that's a fair enough speed and consistent through there. So um, I would be comfortable presenting an ordinance. Yeah, I agree with them. Um, it's as it's a good as any road to do that, too. I think that's the number you suggested some time ago, right, Steve? Yeah, I suggest yeah. pull the 35 mile an hour sign. Right, right. <laughs> so, good, good. so, well, we have all the information we need now. Yeah. Um, would anyone <coughs> care to make a motion? 
Uh, well, I'll move that we change the speed limit from on Whitby Road from, I guess it's the whole road, right? Fair Hill to the town line to 25 miles an hour. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? I'm grateful for all the yeah. attention you put to it and also the residents. You know, it's a lot of effort. Okay, <clears throat> any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. And the speed will be changed to 25. And as it goes, uh, residents who want to oppose this have Well, we have 60, 60, days. 60 days. Actually, that's from, we have to write the ordinance and we have to present it at one of our meetings and that starts the 60 day clock. Okay. And then I think they have, um, I mean, we can, I'll look at it again, but it, it's up to maybe 15 days or 44. They have a period of time where 5% of the residents in town put a petition out saying they don't want to speak on the, the ordinance change. But that will all be when we write the ordinance and have the public meeting, you know, we'll okay. distribute that data so okay. everybody knows it. And so we could do that by our next meeting, would you think? Uh, Who's going to write the ordinance? I was thinking you were the current. Does anyone disagree with I you? I think know? it's a fine <laughs> option. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that I, I will do it, but I, I would say I would want a month, not two weeks. I have enough okay. Right now, so. how, how detailed does it need See, to be? Hold on. This is a, it's actually going to be a revision to the traffic ordinance because uh, that's where our speed limits yes. are listed. So if you. I can use an old one and draft it and send it to you. Does That'd that work? That'd be perfect. Then we'll shoot for next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I like the, you know, what they call that, under promise yeah, exactly. and over deliver. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, okay. We're putting this on the fast track. We're putting it. Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? I'd like to express my gratitude to all of you for the time you've taken to do this uh, painful at first thinking uh, what was involved in this and having been through it now I've been educated and deeply appreciate the time and patience and uh, the, the amount of effort that's been taken to do this and I I don't want to speak for the residents of Wickipie Hill but knowing all of those who signed the petition to start this I believe I'm speaking on behalf of 90% of them also express their appreciation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Yeah. Had a good, uh, good arguments that you brought. Yeah. So, all right. What else do you have there? Okay, okay. so the uh, Park Lawton Road structure, um, that is complete. Charlotte's got in the paperwork. Um, to the state for our 90% reimbursement. Um, if I was going to guess, it'd probably take a couple months to get that. Um, but we'll see. Tucker Reed Bridge, um, they should be pouring the deck on Friday. Um, and if not October 1st, hopefully um, within that first week. Um, a lot depends on the concrete and how it cures and or speed it cures. Um, paving, um, Springfield paving completed that on Monday. And that was part of that was the uh, Coonabrook Apartments or Coonabrook Road. Mm -hmm. Um, everything looks good there. Well, and then we did what? Old uh, Route 5 and... Yeah, and Holmbrook. And Holmbrook, okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Um, crack ceiling. Um, he called me tonight and was saying Monday and Tuesday. Um, I'm still a little bit unclear on how what the distance is, what they're going to get done, and a lot depends on how many cracks they find and um, how many have grass in them and those kind of things. 
that was East West Road and yes, um, Road? yeah, that little bit on Schoolhouse Road, but we didn't pave. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then working towards the center. I would like to get the town clerk's office done, no matter what. So they might start that second day just to get it done. Um, okay. Then the uh, line painting. Um, that should be the end of the month, and that is uh, white lines on Middle Road, um, double yellow on Houghton Brook and uh, Johnson's Curve Road, what we just paved. Um, I believe that's it for this year for that. Do we get some reimbursement for that? No, um, the state will come, they've already done Johnson's Curve, Nolan oh. Brook. Um, when they did the rest of the town, but and they could possibly be back to do it, but if they haven't done it by then, it's just as easy to do it and oh. just to make sure it gets done before oh. winter. Um, as you saw, the bill for the new dump truck that was the cabin chassis, so the body should be. <laughs> I know last year it was kind of long, but the body should be. Um, uh, before the end of next month, we'll just say. <coughs> um, so right now, um, we're working on uh, culverts on Rickaby Hill, Stickney, and Fish Road, um, and we're also doing some underdrain on those roads. Um, you might have noticed, um, I think Hugh and Zeke were here, but on the crushing of the gravel, it was over um, budget. Um, and the reason for that was um, to get the $3.50 a yard price, uh, we had to crush that amount of gravel. Um, so if we went 1,000 yards less, then we would have ended up paying $4, and then it, we would have even had. Um, and yeah, right, and it's not going to go bad in a pile down there, so it's, it's not a. Um, Problem. It's just a matter of um, we might hold off on spending all the gravel money until we make sure the budget is is good at the end of next year. Well, so I have a couple questions. Yep. So, um, do we have the equipment to do road line painting? No. No. So you hire somebody to do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they usually come up. Um, they're from Massachusetts. They okay. come up and do uh, Vernon. Um, us, I think maybe New Fame might be doing some white lines this year. Uh -huh. They might be doing some of theirs. And then, um, Lee, what's uh, what are the kinds of activities that you do that are preparation for winter? Um, well, we try to out of last year's budget. We tried to have the salt shed full, uh -huh. the uh, sand pile full. Uh -huh. So we're good there. Um, just making sure all the equipment is ready. Uh -huh. um, and is there road maintenance that, that gets yeah, done? Yeah, you have to do all your uh, grading, uh, cleaning the ditches, leaves. Uh -huh. um, we have that leaf blower for the tractor. Uh -huh. We'll go around and do that. Um, they usually stay pretty good anyway, mm -hmm. so it's not a big push. Okay, good. good. Yeah, I wondered. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> just wonder if I put a detour sign in front of my house, I could maybe get that leaf blower to sort of go around the around your house. house. <laughs> <laughs> Mine <Mind> works. <laughs> your neighbor has one. You might be able to work yeah. out now with him too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Did you yeah. have some keys in it? <laughs> Not anymore. Oh. Yeah, that leaf blower is, you know, keep saying it. And after all the, the schools you go to and hear of other towns that have got them since. Um, they just make sense. Yeah. Um, time, money, mm -hmm. everything. Good. Yeah. Any other questions for Lee? <coughs> no. no. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Definitely. Let's see. With, uh, if it's all right with everyone, We'll move uh, the proposal for reappraisal from Nemrick. Uh, 
rather than have it be last on our agenda, we could move it up to right now, if that was all right. That way, the listers wouldn't. I know that it's very interesting to listen for our whole meeting, but <laughs> could, you know, they get rested. Asked uh, we won't take more than half an hour. <laughs> We're giving you ten minutes. <laughs> Charlotte and I will be gone. Yeah. All right. Me too. Well, do you, do you, we've got three chairs. Yeah. You want to come up? Please join us. Yeah, yeah. I should come right up and join. Sure, sure. sure. Um, okay. Have anyone looked at this? this? Try to have the camera at the closely. Well, there wasn't really that much there. Um, we decided to explore this a while ago, and we sent out some. RFPs and uh, about five or six of them. We've got this, just this one back, which is the one we probably would have picked anyway. It's from Nemrick. And um, the gentleman who was, would be the uh, chief appraiser is a guy named Ed Clodfelter, who has done uh, hundreds of these things. And he used to do them. Our, uh, representative from PBR used to work for him doing these. So it's all kind of hooked in. We don't have to buy a new computer program or anything else. Um, the, the price is 88500 We have 91277 and 47 cents in the bank for a reappraisal. We would have to provide an office uh, paper and supplies like that. We're thinking of using upstairs with what's it? Uh, the emergency management. Yeah, get permission to use that. And there's we would have work to do too. So I don't know if how much more than our regular budget would be involved in our work. It would just be a time thing and doing mailings and um, probably plus tapping our what we do know about houses. I don't, I don't think anybody disagrees with the fact that we need a reappraisal. Um, it's been 10 years. Um, and it's, it's, we're not required to do it. But it takes, it'll be, won't be done until 2018. 19. 19? 19. Uh, well, we got two dates. He made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Day. Right. Yes. Well, so it's 19. Start, it? <laughs> no, it's not a good start. But, so it won't be done until 2019. So, um, actually, someone from uh, town s spoke to me on primary day, you know, saying that uh, reappraisal now will affect the school budget or the assessment. I can uh, tell you who that was. Well, <laughs> but can you address that concern? Well, they, they're, the common level goes to 100 when you're doing a reappraisal. The what? The well, common level. Do you know what the common level is? The common level is the relationship between the assessed value and the sales. Okay. Our sales are running at 109% now, which means they're 9% over. And you have, if it goes to 120, they're fortunate to do a rephrase. If it goes to 120 what? Percent. Yeah. They will force you to have an appraisal. They will force you to have an appraisal. Um, this, this the figures go for three years. So you can't really, the three years before we had like below 100 and then 100, and now it's 109. But if you, I think if you pull the last year off, it would be a lot higher than that. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So do, do you mean by that they're, they're selling for 109% of a of yeah. trade value? Okay. No, it's the other way around. So, so their value, the, the values are 109% are of what they're selling for. Okay. Um, in other words, they're selling yeah. for less than what we got gotcha. appraised. Okay. And we are getting a ton of people who want to be reappraised. And um, you can't make any, any equity if you do that. But you can't refuse it either because they say, look, I just sold it for 50000 and you've got it for 100000 Obviously, you have to do something. But then they'll have to be reappraised again in the reappraisal. So I'd like to cut down that activity as much as we can. When you say a ton of people, can you be a little more specific? What would you say? Oh, gosh, probably at least 10%. 10% of the people. Yeah, I would say. 
Of the sales. Of the sales. Of the sales. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so that figure would be, if it was a number, that would be what? And what number do you want? Like 20 people? From the grand list? Yeah. Oh. oh. I was going to say 15. 15. Oh. 15. So I'm not sure, Doug, that, that I understood the answer to the question that has been presented to us, several of us, about if we change our appraisal that our school tax is going to go up. I'm not sure that I understood in your answer how we get from that. Well, when you're working on a reappraisal, mm -hmm. your common level goes back to 100%. And, um, that's perfect. You got to have a common level. Yeah. Um, so, so I'm, I guess maybe Zeke, you could explain to us why it changes our school tax. I, well, I it's was not looking for some some, it affects, some explanation yes, too. Yeah. It affects. It's part of the reimbursement formula. You multiply this by this by this, and and then by the common level. Okay. And um, so. So it could go down. Yeah. It's helping us. <clears throat> Well, uh, the explanation that we've received is that it would go, go up. up. Right. So well, from that it. individual happens to be the only one that ever took us to the Supreme Court. Um, and I feel strongly that he's more concerned about his own appraisal than he is about the school budget or anything yeah, else. That's, he's not here to defend himself right now. So okay, let's well, that anytime he likes, I'll talk to him. I think they just have to work a little uh, harder on their budget to make better budget school. There's nothing you can do about it anyway. Yeah, we, we should be. It, it, it is sad that so many places are selling less than appraised value. That, But it's happening all over the state. That's right. why yes, exactly. Yes. They have an approved list of appraisers, and they're all booked forever. Yeah. Um, so, Charlotte, you've been trying to say something. Well, uh, yeah, I was doing a little research, and unfortunately I didn't do it quite early enough. But um, when you have finished a reappraisal, they don't, um, your, they, they sort of take your new grand list and compare it to your most recent equalized grand list. And, and they don't take your CLA from 100% up or 116% to 100%. They'll find a sort of in-between one is what this says, but I haven't didn't have the time to go read up on it a little more. But the question was, are we going to be penalized if we had an 85% and now it goes to 100% and the answer to the question was that um, your CLA will be equal to the new grand list value from your reappraisal divided by its most recent equalized grand list value. So I, have, I haven't run the numbers, so I don't know what exactly, if we're going from higher down to lower, what that would do versus going from lower to higher. But I guess it does mean you're not going to be socked the whole change. The, the whole the, nine. The whole shebang yeah, for yeah. the first. It could be at 102 or right. whatever. Yeah. Right. They realize that that's a concern. Yeah. The state does. And, uh, I think they would take that into consideration if it gets out of hand. So if it takes a couple of years to accomplish the reappraisal, um, at what point do particular houses have a new appraisal? When it's done. When, when it's, it's done, done. Yes. as you go. Yes. They're all done at once. It's all done at once. 2019 will be oh. the year. Okay. Yeah. Grand yeah. Grand I mean, first, they, they we work on them for two years. I see. But nothing changes until we're done with it. And so then you it change be, them all be, at once at the then end. Then we send That's out right. a little So we work, on them every, we work on two grand lists for those two years. Okay. But only yeah. one goes out to the public. Okay. It wouldn't be fair to make corrections. Well, that's why I was asking. It's all done at the end. Yeah. Yes. I that understand. would make it extremely confusing. Yeah. Doug, how long ago was the last reappraisal? Ten years ago. That's the second It took us three years to do it. So it took effect in 06 or? 06. Yeah, we started effect. in 2003. Okay. And and did they, was it at 100% then? 
Yes. I think we can yeah, have just a little bit over, maybe 101 you or 102. When we got the ceiling back then? Right. Did, did, it, hmm? did it bring did it right back? Did we have CLA back then? Oh, did we have CLAs back then? Yeah. Oh, sure we did. Yeah. 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 They've been for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we that's when we started the program that we'll be using. So, Jean, you were involved in that last reappraisal? Oh, yes. Doug and I both oh, you did both a lot did of the reappraisal. And so, um, were there things that worked really well or didn't work so well? What was the um, reaction of residents to, you know, the final reappraisal? I think it was generally. Quite, quite, quite Acceptable. Uh -huh. were, um, you're always going to get people that are not right. Happy. But overall, overall. it was. <clears throat> we we learned that it's difficult to come up with land values. Uh, and land that doesn't have a house. You mean? That, well, if you look at your tax bill, the a per acre value for your house site is different. Then. Is high. Mm -hmm. And what what do you do with the land values? Is you chart. Three years of land sales, just strictly land sales, can't be taken off a of house sale or anything else. And you make these graphs, and I did it, and I can't remember exact values, but you make this graph, and you give it all to the state. They will do that, probably in one twentieth of the time it took me. Mm -hmm. And then the state proposes a land value chart, um, and so we were coming toward the end. And we were under the gun, and they sent us these land values and said, pick one of these. Well, we didn't have any idea of what we were doing. We tried to do the best we could, and once we started, we couldn't change it. And that was the only thing that really made it difficult. Mm -hmm. Because, and we had to pick neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. You know, like, what do we have, three neighborhoods? Three neighborhoods. Because there's a factor in the land value for a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like where the select board lives, we made high neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> and where I live, Doug says I'm in the And I think the chickens in the road. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, and that was really difficult yeah. too. Yeah. Well, so now, with this experience and our knowledge, the combination I think will do really well and come up with a decent, because we know what we're looking for now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ted and, and Beverly and Waldo did the other reappraisal and just raised everybody by 20%. And <laughs> the only thing she talked about was how they would have picnics while they were out. <laughs> God, my dad didn't remember it that way. But <laughs> so um, that was the only problem, I think, that we had. We went into over 90%, 95%, I oh, gosh, think, yes. of the houses. Mm -hmm. uh, we hired Dick Putnam to help us. So we'd go out two and two. And do the houses. They, um, they did Putney. And um, I, yeah, Mark. yeah, mm -hmm. I spent some time with Dan Cassidy, and he's, oh. um, as yeah. you know, interested in this kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, the guy came to Dan's house, and he wasn't um, too aggressive about getting into it. He's, he kind of introduced himself. I don't have to go in your house, and you. You don't have to let a lister into your house. You can refuse entrance. Um, and Dan said, yeah, I want you to come in my house. Mm -hmm. I want you to see it. So I think we have to be careful that these people that work for them try, make an effort to get into a house mm -hmm. more than, because sometimes it's difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, and I just, we had a spiel where if you don't let us in your house, it doesn't do you any good and it doesn't do us any good mm -hmm. because we don't know what's in there. Um, and then you sell it for 50% more than we've got. Usually it's the other way around because we make sure we put everything we think is in there mm -hmm. on the appraisal. And right. it, it just it, it ruins the equity of the whole thing. <laughs> so we try to encourage people. And of course, we have all the old stuff. <clears throat> old records that we use. So, mm -hmm. no, let me ask. So, just like so, looking at the last few years, so it was, um, it was pretty, it was pretty steady. Oh four, 
I'm sorry, 14 and 15, then take a 5% jump, uh, then a 3% jump in it this year. So, I mean, is that, I mean, I can't predict the future, but I mean, with those trends, you're going to be forced to do this in three years anyway, is what it looked at. I mean, uh, well, what, then, what would then, stop that from rising, I guess? Then after that, you've got new values, which if they're perfect, they'll stay at 100. No, I'm saying if we well, didn't if do this. If the market got hot, okay. then we'd go back. It would start right. to go back. Or down. if it didn't, if it cooled off even more, yeah. it would go. Okay. But I see the last couple of years have been, you know, it's been an 8% jump in just the last two years. Um, so, I mean, who knows what the market's going to get hot. Don't forget that sure. covers three years of sales. Yeah. It's not just... Well, I'm just looking at the, the line from the... Yeah, I guess the school adjustment for those years that are in the report, but um, and I guess the other on a personal level for people who are doing this, if we do this, and you, I mean, everybody has somebody knock on your door, and you're, you know, I guess the professionals they do it, but who who are you letting in your house? I mean, are these people bonded, certified? What what who are you letting? Well, in? they're all they're all wear name tags and mark their cars, and we. You contact them before you go, yeah, and uh, tell them who's going to come and. and uh, yeah, I just think people are very reluctant. I would be reluctant to, you know, well, certainly I would not be pleased if you know I wasn't home and someone wanted to come into my. Well, home. but you oh, said no. they we call that. and make an appointment. Well, yeah. I know, but you know, either spouse is home we don't, or someone else. We never go on a piece of property unannounced. Okay. We always have an appointment. There have been listeners that got me in real trouble for mm -hmm. doing that. Okay. And would one of you traditionally go with? We don't know. We don't think oh, okay. we have. We don't see that in the contract. Okay. Did anybody read the contract? I looked through it just to see that it took three years. <laughs> That's what, <laughs> That's what it cost. You ought to have it when you have a minute. Yeah. In yeah. the cost. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you may have some questions because he's going to come and see us at some point. Well, these people he's have done us. hundreds of right. these things, so they've encountered probably. Um, you know, every situation except Wickipy Hill, some of your neighbors. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So $88,000 over the course of three years. Two years. Two years. Two years. But you said it takes three years? Well, by no, the old years. one took three years. The last oh, one so this is two years. years. It'll be done in 2018. She said 19. 2019. Starts yeah. in 17. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, sir. Okay. Um, so, what kind of hours a week is that? How many, you know, what kind of time is this organization we just putting into it? We just have the total figure. They don't, they don't He sends us, us a week, a week, it's $3,300 a week. No, a month. month. Thir Thirty-six, a month. eighty-seven, fifty a right. month. Okay, and, and that's based on how many houses we have in Vermont, right. I mean in Gummerson? Yes, yes. It's the based final number prices. of houses. It can't yeah, change. Parcels. I mean, it's not done by, well, it's done by per parcel basis, but once we sign a contract, it's... Right, but it's, that's what I wanted to know. Is it per parcel yes. basis? Yes. That's how that's the price is set. All. And if there's any more than that, then they have a, a number to, to go by. Mm -hmm. And since we have the 91000 in the bank, it shouldn't have too much effect on the town budget. Mm -hmm. uh, one question I have, Doug, um, um, th there's... We don't have a lot of sales in this town, you know, no. and, uh, and and this is all based on comparables, you know, so it's it, it's really an inexact science. Um, Absolutely. Uh, but you know, with that said, um, do you know uh, do they does the do the current assessed values factor at all? Do they even look at the current assessed values, or do they start with a clean slate? Mm -hmm. No, they look at the current assessed values because there's a lot of houses, including one of my neighbors who's put in a whole new kitchen, a whole new family room, and everything else. And the only reason I know that is because I live there. But he didn't have to get a building permit. So we have no idea that he's done all that stuff. And there are people who have done game rooms, added bathrooms, remodeled, and things like that. So the equity part is also is not good anymore. So we take, we go out and they find this a house that's all modern on the inside, and you look at the card, and it's not. So you got to change it. They have the current mm -hmm. information. Mm -hmm. They have a worksheet that they take with them, and they fill out the worksheet. Mm -hmm. 
and that just use the the the, the uh, current information just as a guide that they, because what the new information that they come up with on their sheet will go into the computer mm -hmm. so see. it will be updated okay so where is the ninety one thousand dollars from the state every year sends us a certain amount of money for each parcel to save for a Reappraisal. Mm -hmm. So. That's insane. Right. So, so what's the what's if there is what's the downside to doing this? Why? Um, it's a lot of work. But it's but so it's somebody's business, so it's good for them. <laughs> you know. Right. Uh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of inequities in the, in our grand list. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, that's the it, you know, like the day after you're done, it's probably out of whack because somebody mm -hmm. will be doing something, and and not. Right, but I guess I, what I heard is that there are people who are talking, approaching somebody saying that we can't do this because it's going to cause a problem. I guess I'm asking, what's that problem? I don't understand what that Well, is. you need to ask them what the problem yeah. is. So they as, as listers, you don't see a downside? No, I no, don't really. see a downside. I think it's no, good. I, you it's know, the equity, like, I keep going back to equity. It's all out of whack now. Yeah. I mean, some houses are 30 years old and they're not the... Uh, were or within the ten years have depreciated a lot. Um, Yeah, so in, in the end, this helps you do your job. If we get yeah. things into a more well, equitable... Everybody um, wants to pay their fair share of taxes. And this is the way you can come as close to that as possible. Mm -hmm. um, All towns do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and so you looked at other organizations that do this, and you're comfortable with this, and you're recommending that well, we Well, this is the only answer we got. And this is the oh. ones we would have picked anyway, but mm -hmm. we thought that mm -hmm. we'd be... And you're comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Good. I think they're the best. But you Back up to Phil. You're on camera. Uh, yeah. So, oh, the, the, yeah. So let's. The let's how's so your house do it? How's yeah. your do, how are your dogs do it? <laughs> I, I one of them died. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I just so, wanted. This is a brand new house. Wait. I think that maybe we should not we go. Start half an hour. Here. Yeah, you've gone over okay. your time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I'm so I think the plug. basically one of the reasons that we wanted to come to you was to make sure you read, read the proposal. Mm -hmm. It's right over there realize, in the basket. To realize, yeah. I think there was one put in. Yeah, there's one. Yeah, we have. And for the select board to realize that you will need to be using the this this number. You will need to be putting it into the warning for the new um, town meeting in March. All right. And so um, it will also be part of the listers budget that we will be adding money mm -hmm. for the reappraisal to our wages too because it will be beyond what we normally do every day. Mm -hmm. okay. And we have so. to buy some equipment. Yeah. Pencils? Pencils. 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 And, and pencil sharpeners. <laughs> and big erasers. <laughs> and a router. Mm -hmm. okay. but I don't know if we need new computers or not. I don't know. But, but if you read, it, I it would yeah. I really appreciate it if you would all read. Okay. And if you have any questions, we'll, please we'll. call one of us. Okay. Yes. So we so, may have um, more questions for you later about yeah. this. Great. Anytime. Yeah. 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 Good. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you. 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 I can tell. But we have the camera. Your best stop. Yeah. <laughs> That's the <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, so that will be a. I guess we
we have to promote that will become a warning in this book for next yep. month, correct? Yep. That's we'll our budgets as follow. Yep. 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 Okay. 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 Right. Well, thank you for coming. Yes, sir. Well, let's let's get let's move on. Uh, correspondence for information. Um, is there anything there that you wanted to discuss? Okay. If not, then let's go on to correspondence for discussion and or action. We have uh, the Act 250 uh, people want to go paperless. And um, one of the, uh, they seem to be suggesting that, uh, or giving us the option, rather than have the electronic communications go to the uh, chair of the Planning Commission and the chair of the select board that go to the town clerk, who can then see that it actually uh, gets to everyone who needs to uh, be informed on this. So that seems like a reasonable idea. So I take a motion to uh, sign this delegation of authority. So moved. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, well, I guess here's delegating it to the town clerk yep. to do it. Okay. <coughs> yep. That's who they suggest. Have we asked the town clerk? If, uh, uh, yes, they were happy to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I feel better already. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, all those, any more discussion? <coughs> all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. So, we'll do that. Great. So, we need Act 250. Uh, correspondence after October 3rd. We'll be going to the town clerk and then to everyone else who needs it. We have a request from the town treasurer to close out the housing awareness grant. This is, we're discussing a balance of $46.63. Do you want to speak to this? Or do you want me to elaborate? <laughs> You can elaborate. Okay. I'll okay. do one better. I'll just move that we close it. <laughs> oh, I'll second that. All right. And then I'll move the question. <laughs> and that's the uh, discussion. Um, this would then go to, into the general account, general fund. So, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. <laughs> there you can have the treasurer, ask the treasurer to move that. Money over. Uh, let's see. Let's move on to unfinished business. We have any update on the fire station fundraising drive? It's at now at thirteen thousand four hundred dollars. Okay, great. <coughs> and fire station construction update. I've heard that um, the, they're not planning to begin construction until the spring at this time. Has anyone else heard anything? I have not. No, I've heard that same thing. Oh, <laughs> I just wanted to be sure. No, I, th I think they're, they're going to have to put it off. Yeah. yeah. Um, any more discussion on that? Uh, let's see. We have... Um, Revision to the investment policies. Uh, yeah, in fact, it would only be one of the investment policies that we we passed. Um, uh, I guess it was last month. Uh, and uh, the reason for this revision, um, we submitted it to uh, Edward Jones, which uh, where we plan to establish the account to accept these these securities, uh, and they uh, they asked us to revise it to uh, delete a sort of a technical. Uh, 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 matter that is in the Vermont League of Cities and Towns uh, policy that uh, it, it does you know, is is not being followed by by investment companies. Uh, I could read it to you, uh, but I don't think it's necessary. As well, they asked us to authorize investments in things like stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, even though we're going to be selling those, so that they have the authority to accept them into the account. Um, uh, so what I did was I uh, I I. I, I 
drafted a revised policy, sent it to Edward Jones, they approved it. Um, but what I did was I had just plugged in those additional investments into you know, the, uh, you know, the permitted investments uh, that are in, under by statute. And it was just a couple of days ago I realized that and because, uh, you know, as all powerful as we are, I don't think we're authorized to uh, uh, revise Vermont statutes. <laughs> so I, uh, so I, uh, I, I came up with a revised policy that just says that, you know, in addition to the, uh, the, the investments authorized by statute, we're also authorized to invest in uh, common per and preferred stocks, uh, uh, bonds, and mutual funds. And, uh, and I got that to Edward Jones first thing yesterday morning, and I asked him to get back to me. Um, I don't believe I've heard, you know, I haven't checked my, uh, my, off, my home email today, but I'm quite confident that it, that it will be a, a, approved by Edward Jones compliance folks. And as such, I would suggest that we go ahead and just uh, sign it because there is some urgency and that we have a couple of donors of appreciated securities that, um, that would like to go ahead and give them in the market. Is, kind of volatile as we speak, so I think that we'd like to move on this. Okay, do you want to make a motion? I would move that we uh, uh, adopt the uh, revised uh, 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 reserve fund investment policies that I distributed previously. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Well, thank you. Yeah, um, thank you, Joe. Well, no, I, I do want to circulate this and have us all sign it now. Okay, this is the unfinished business. This should be, yeah. we should be yeah. able to find it Yeah, right on top, thank you. Right. All uh, right, so I'm going to sign it. And then, oh, yes. after we've all signed that, we have the select board assistant mm -hmm. job description. Can I? Oh, um, yes. Joe had said that he was going to be out of town for the next two weeks. Right, and I, and I did speak with uh, Anna Saavedra about that, and, uh, um, and I told her I anticipated this would be approved tonight. Um, she talked about, you know, somebody's going to need to sign a signature card. Um, uh, I said, um, you know, I would prefer to have somebody like Zeke sign it, you know. Uh, she said, well, don't they have fax machines in California? I said, well, I'm sure they do, but I was really hoping not to do town business when I'm on vacation, so. And uh, that's why I guess I would just suggest that you know, somebody like Zeke or you know, any of us, you know, sign that. Or whatever someone who works downtown. Yeah. So no, I work downtown, yeah. but sure. I, I don't know, I'm not Zeke. Uh, well, I, well, I don't. I'm not I, an I officer. Down t I go to Putney once in a while. But I, I think Ger <laughs> when they let you out. out. I, I, think, I think Gerilyn would be a good suggestion. Somebody I, down town. Yeah. I think he should be excellent. Well, what about you? Yeah. yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Gerilyn, by acclamation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'd be happy to do that. Great. Thank you. Okay, so oh, and, uh, Charlotte, would you just let um, Anna know that indeed we did adopt this and mm -hmm. you know ask as, her as you sent it to her, right, okay. right, and ask her to let us let you know yep. uh, when when indeed they they approve it also. I will, and if they have any other questions. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, so we have the select board new uh, job description for select board assistant. I didn't see a copy of it, um, but I sent it to everybody after the meeting, and I'm assuming that's what went out and to the person we had a person apply, so. Well, it hasn't been approved, so probably the old one went out. I oh. sent him the old one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Okay. Well, I wish I had copies to show everybody, but um, I sent it to everybody. It, it reflected the changes that we all worked on. There were some um, things we wanted in different order. There was some different wording. There were a few things to come out. Um, so I would move that we approve the updated job description for the select board assistant. I'll second that. OK, discussion? OK, everyone on? Do you want to look at it? Do you do you want to? Uh, I'll have to abstain because I didn't get a chance to review it. So that's all right. I should I'll have just asked um, to have it printed uh, out. 
there was one change I wanted that I didn't see if it had been done. Okay. Um, my thought was uh, uh, in the opening it said um, that uh, the person, the staff board assistant, will act uh, at through the board chair. Yes. And I was wondering if uh, there have been times when um, you know members need information or they're working on a project uh, and they should, I think, the assistant should uh, be able to work with them. Right. I don't think, so I'll read the sentence mm -hmm. and I don't think that it precludes any of us going directly um, to the select board assistant. The select board assistant will assist the select board as directed by that board through its chair in day-to-day -day governance of the town. So in other words, the select board assistant, um, you know, if the board chair directs that assistance in such a way that there is permission, mm -hmm. I think it just, um, it, and you know, Lori can speak to this, it might be overwhelming to have people, um, uh, I don't know, sort of five people being authoritative to the select board assistant rather than knowing that it's a, a common, you know, it's going through a particular. I, I'd like to take a more e egalitarian view of okay. the situation and um, where no, you know, uh, nobody has more authority. Anything any of us do has to be, we can't act without the consent of the rest of the board. So, um, uh, so. So we could strike that yeah. and it could just say the select board assistant will assist the select board in day-to-day -day governance of the town. I'd be, you know, I haven't always been the chair and I probably won't always the chair in the future. So I'd like to be able to, if I'm working on something with the approval of the board, mm -hmm. be able to. Uh, I think that makes sense. Do, does that feel good to you, Lori? Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. How's that feel with you? Yeah, I mean, clearly, I mean, I've, I've contacted yeah. and worked with Lori on different things, so. Yeah, right. I've never had a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. I mean, you wouldn't want to take advantage of that, but if, if somebody's assigned a task, right. they may need mm -hmm. to work through Lori yeah. with Lori. Okay. It's deleted. With the assistant. Gone. Excellent. Okay, now I'm okay with this. Okay. So, any more discussion? Okay. You're ready to vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? No, I'm going to abstain just because okay. I did not get a chance to do it. Totally. Okay, I didn't see who moved, or hear who moved and seconded it. I moved. Joe seconded. Thank you. Okay. And, you know, I'm hoping that um, our current select board assistant will have a change of heart and ask that, you know, we rescind, you know, her resignation letter. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so there we go. We're on a roll now. Um, so, uh, Hugh, would you like to, in 250 words or less, give us an update on the Wyndham uh, Solid Waste Management District net metering project? And if you need to go over 250, you know, I think we'll be okay with that. Right. Uh, sure. Yes, I will do that. Um, so I went to this, uh, where's my, I'm trying to keep my 250 words oh. here. Um, what was it? September 6th, um, I went to the daytime meeting, yep. um, and I think we had several of our energy committee members go to the evening meeting. I think Gerald went as well, right, to the evening meeting. So the Wyndham Solid Waste Solar Project, um, I might have to go through all these things. The, um, the uh, I don't have any history with the solar project. I know there was something a while ago, maybe there was some solar project that didn't go the way it was, you know, right. it was brought up there. Right. But, so just concentrating on this, so this, these, this group has taken over this project from someone else. Um, so it's got the capital behind it. It's got um, on board, which is um, trying to facilitate it. And then what they're doing is they're, it's a five megawatt facility 
that's going to be on the Wyndham landfill. And then they're offering municipalities first to buy into it. If there's anything left, they're going to offer it into corporations. And then if they don't really think anything will be left, it will eventually go to private citizens to, uh, to potentially be able to buy into it. So um, just the, uh, the overview. Net meter 1.0, does that mean anything to anyone? I don't want to get into this. But, um, so I'll just say they are, this project is, is kind of on a, a faster track because the rules are going to change on January 1st. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, they're looking to have, um, I think, buy-in by, I think, the end of October, or maybe in some part of November is what the, if, if, you know, if you're interested in going into it. So you're buying your power at, at a rate, and then you're going to get credit for a bit of a higher rate um, for the sales, um, or, or as you, you you pay two bills. You're going to get your bill. You're going to pay some to Green Mountain Power, and then you're going to pay some to you know the financier of this. And there's projected savings that are out there, and I'll I'll pay each one of those. The uh, Energy Committee um, did some bullets up. I went to their meeting on Monday night, and they um, they did a few. So I just start out with saying that at that meeting they recommended that the town participate in this project um, and then um, they just kind of echoed some of the things that were brought out at, at the meeting um, what the, what they're looking for the, if we buy this they're looking for you to purchase it about an 80 percent factor so like our we look at our bill street lights are not eligible for this so we look at our total usage and we would purchase an 80 percent projected use of that does that make sense when yes okay um, go ahead got a question yeah um so if we i think our municipal budget for electricity is somewhere in the five thousand dollar range yeah. and if we subtract what we use for street lights it's, it's actually I, it's a separate budget yeah it's for five street lights okay it's, and then I think the school the is Something like twenty-five or twenty-seven thousand. Yeah, they're 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 actually on their their own. So that like one of the school board yeah. members was at the energy mm -hmm. committee meeting. Yeah. Uh, whether they do it through them or they have to go through the district, I think that's another question. Um, but for us, you know, for what I think we're looking at, our electric bill is uh, taking out the street lights. Five thousand one hundred and thirty-one dollars. So I mean, we're not talking about this thing that money. Eighty percent. Um, let me just jump ahead. This is not exact science, but for us, um, Green Mountain Power Bill of five thousand. Um, uh, you'd purchase a net metering credit of roughly four thousand, mm -hmm. um, and so you get your your. Um, Bill from Green Mountain Power. Um, you pay, so you're, you're buying essentially a four thousand dollar credit. So you're uh, that'd be for the year. So just this a yearly example. I think is how I work this out. You're gonna owe Green Mountain Power about nine hundred and ninety bucks, uh, and then you're gonna owe the Sky Solar twenty nine thirty five or something. Our Again, my projected math, public math here. Our projected savings over a year would be about a thousand bucks. I think where it's a twenty. Just to cut to the chase, if you buy um, eighty percent, you're saving approximately twenty one percent, is what the projected savings is. And then, you know, for the first ten, this is a twenty year project with a five year extension potential. So there's a solar offset that goes in for um, the first 10 years. I'm not sorry, that's not correct. Um, actually, I think it is. Yeah, in 10 years, there's a solar offset. So you're getting a, a little bit additional credit. It starts out at 19 cents and you know just projected on the residential rate. It goes up, but the solar offset um, Sundowns it after ten years, so you're actually at the ten-year point. You're not getting quite the higher credit. It kind of resets a little bit of a lower credit. Um, I think that it's 
it's probably about the most detail that I'm qualified to talk about mm -hmm. without you know, spending some more time on it. Um, so I guess the, the takeaway is that, uh, let me just take a look. So there are notes, the 80%, they want, you, know, you don't want to buy 100% because you don't know whether you have efficiency changes or changes in building status or something, you know, you don't want to go to the 100% because if you buy too many, you don't, you lose that, you don't get it back, um, is my understanding. Um, net metering 2.0, the one thing that's going to change in January 1st is that um, the rates are most likely going to go down. The, nobody knows what the solar offset will be. Um, <coughs> And then there's just the intangibles, the siting of it. This is a five megawatt project, you know, on a landfill. Um, I think projects of that size will no longer be authorized after January 1st. Um, now, I did have an energy guy going to come and help me with this, but he's at a Bruce Springsteen concert. So, okay. you know, that he, he chose that over this. I don't know why. Can't imagine that. Um, actually, they've written down a November 30th deadline. So I guess for, you know, General, if you've had anything, please go ahead. But um, for us, the next pro step would simply be if you want to, you know, delve into this a little more, really all the, the next thing we do is we just authorize Encore to take a look at our usage and make a recommendation to us on what we should purchase at that 80% rate. Um, and then, you know, once we do that, at that point, we'd look at the contract. I think our Bob Fisher has actually was the one who worked on the contract. So it's a general contract for you know all the towns that are going to get into this. Um, you know the fact that he's already you know we've already looked at it. Um, I think that's a bit of an advantage. Um, so going forward, if if you'd like, we could just at least allow Encore to look at our bill and then make the recommendation to us. And then you know what I try to get, and they they're willing to come here. You know they're coming down from you know the northern part of the state, so I didn't ask them to come down for for tonight. But um, or there's some experts at the Wyndham Solid Waste who is going to get a, a leasing agreement out of this, and then I think um, Lou, I think who's a, from Jamaica, is pretty you know he's pretty well in tune, and I think you know he would you know, I'm going to speak for him, but he would probably come here and, and offer it more in depth if if it's something we want to pursue. Um, so I thought they did a great job presenting it. Uh, you know, it, there's really I don't see any downsides. You know, I think the energy committee was pretty yeah, well in favor one, of it. One of the different things um, you probably remember the Green Lantern um, contract. That also was a 20-year contract, but you couldn't get out of it. Mm -hmm. With this one, you can. You can find someone else to take, you know, you have to take some responsibility in shifting your portion to someone else. But they don't have any, um, they have confidence that they're going to fill their need. You know, like they don't need us. Mm -hmm. They don't need us. Um, uh, it was their intention to offer it to municipalities first. Mm -hmm. um, but if municipalities don't go for it or the municipalities aren't um, fulfilling their, their need, they're confident that there are other takers. Mm -hmm. okay. This looks like a really big project. Do you know how many panels they're talking about? Uh, it's 17 acres. It doesn't say how many. Yeah, there was a map that yeah. we saw. I don't think it's in that presentation, yeah. but Bob uh, Spencer showed us a map. Yeah, it's a lot. But, He's yeah. got it all mapped out. Yeah. Okay. So I think the public sector deadline is what I wrote down as the end of November. Right. And at that point, they're going to go for, if there's, a, if there's anything left, they'll go to businesses. Mm -hmm. and that. There's only one school district there when I was at the meeting. Yeah. And it was I mean, it's a no-brainer for the school. Um, you know, our use yeah. isn't that great. So um, we want to make sure there isn't a downside. We want to make sure that it's not more administration on our part um, to save $1,000. Right. I mean, Thousand dollars isn't nothing, but it, you can spend that pretty quickly if what you're creating is more complicated. Right. So. Right. Right. So, yeah, uh, and it, it would be I think two additional checks. You know, we get when I looked at the power bills today. You know, you're going to have to write the check to Green Mountain. We get two separate we get a town hall bill yeah. and a town garage bill. Those are the two eligible bills. You'd write a check to Green Mountain Power, 
and then you'd have to write a check to um, uh, not on for but the solar sky solar sky solar. So that's essentially what I feel it is at the moment. It's two additional checks that are going to be written each month. Yeah. So I would move that we. Um, ask Encore to go ahead with an assessment and give us something in writing yeah. that tells us, you know, um, what it is, what the savings is, what we should be considering, um, and something about the contract. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? And if you, when you ask them for that, I'm assuming you, you'll ask them yes, for I'll that? I think it would be good to let them know that our next select board meeting is the 28th. And mm -hmm. so if they can do that, you know, I mean, November is going to be here before we know it. Right. Um, and to make an informed yeah. decision, that's, yeah. that would be good to have. So, and I guess, I guess the follow-up that is, you know, and hopefully we can really, you know, I think someone more in tune, let the energy debate we get here kind of explain this. I, I mm -hmm. thought they did a good job in discussion. I thought they had some very in-depth you know, thoughts on you know and questions on, on how it all went. Um, they looked really into that net metering 2.0, which you know I I think we're better off getting into this you know earlier before that rule changes. Like Gerald said, they don't need us. You know, I mean, and we're, we're we're kind of a small little. Yeah. On this I mean, thing. they don't even need the school, but yeah, you know, they, so, they'll get it built. But I guess my question would be on the so you said November will be here quickly or whatever the deadline is. At, what do you want? What does the board want before we like present the contract or have the contract reviewed by the attorney or? What's well, the let's thing? get this. We've got on. We've just voted to have uh, Encore Common do the assessment, mm -hmm. and then once we get that information, we'll. Okay. Go yeah, ahead. and maybe maybe. That should go to the energy committee too, whatever they come sure. back with. And then that yes. meeting where we're considering that, we make sure that there's an energy committee person here at our select board yes, meeting. That so that great. it's not all on your shoulders yeah. to. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But thank you for going to that yeah. meeting and the energy committee meeting. Yeah. How many energy the energy committee's looking for some more people to join. Yeah. yeah. And they um, They're a fun group. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So, okay. thanks for doing that. <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, well, then we, Geraldine, you went to the rescue meeting. Yeah, boy, I learned a lot. <laughs> it was great. Um, I had never been in rescue before, uh, and speaking as a resident, you know, I've always gotten those subscription, you know, subscribe to Rescue and right. been confused by it and, you know, read a little bit in the paper here and there about Rescue. And um, so I got the big picture uh, and Drew Hazelton gave an awesome presentation. There were about, oh, I don't know, a dozen of us there. I was a little surprised that there weren't more towns represented. Um, it was a very good presentation, and I have the feeling that in the last three years, um, there are a number of things that have changed in rescue and the way they do things and the way things are run, and, um, and I went away feeling very confident about their services. Uh, it was important to me to get a sense of well, how do towns organize themselves around rescue services? And uh, Drew answered that by saying there are, there are four different ways that that's done in the state of Vermont. Um, in, a, in like Chittenden County, uh, it's a town service, so your taxes pay for it. Um, there is, you can contract out as a town, contract out. Uh, I don't know what the third one is, and then the fourth one was the kind of situation we have where there's a, a, a non-profit that is um, collaborative among towns. And actually, I um, got a ride home with Harold, uh, and, who was one of the initiating members mm -hmm. of Rescue, so I got some good history as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, 
you know, I think we could invite somebody from rescue to come speak to the board if we wanted to. Um, the town, we have a, a per person portion that we give them. Mm -hmm. um, and I would certainly feel very good about that. And I would also encourage people to subscribe. Um, there are 32,000 people that rescue serves and there are only about 3,000 people that actually um, are subscribers. So, so that's in addition to what the town pays. Right. And there's an advantage to being a subscriber relative to if you use their services, um, the cost to you ends up being less than someone who's not a subscriber. So there are some advantages to it if you end up using their services. But my feeling is just supporting rescue through that subscription um, is reason enough to do it. Okay, sounds like maybe we should have them come see. Yeah. Any questions for Gerald? Okay, thank you, Gerald, for going to that. Uh, we, our delinquent tax collector, um, has uh, issue with a potential tax sale that she would like to uh, consult with our town attorney Bob Fisher, and she'd like our uh, uh, consent to. Uh, I'm almost that we approve. Uh, our delinquent tax collector uh, to consult with our town attorney. I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? Uh, how much time are we talking? I don't think she needs a lot of time. I don't think it's going to be a great deal of time. Like half hour, three hours? An hour or two, maybe. An hour or two. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Any other discussion? <coughs> Excuse me. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Lori, could you let our delinquent tax collector know that this has been approved? Yep. Uh, we interviewed a candidate for the Conservation Commission earlier this evening. I would move that we appoint Deborah Eyre to the Conservation Commission. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I will let her know she has been appointed. Uh, all right, we've already taken care of that last item. Um, in other business, um, we received a request for uh, catering um, uh, liquor uh, for the end of the month, uh, just this earlier today. Mm -hmm. And um, so it really couldn't be put on our agenda. Um, uh, do we want to meet in a special meeting to consider this? Well, I, I believe I heard you say that if we wait until our next select board meeting that it would be too late for them to um, have the state then approve right. it because right. the state needs five days. Um, so, it's unfortunate that they didn't send it to us at least 24 hours in advance of our meeting, mm -hmm. but I would not like to see us make it so that they can't do it. So I would certainly be willing to come to a special meeting. Okay. Uh, when are you talking about? Friday would be the earliest. Okay. To be able to warn it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes, I won't be available. I won't be available. We could come to you, Steve. Yeah. I, I'm supposed to be putting a pool on Friday, so I don't. I, <laughs> not a good day for me. Okay. What would be a good day for you? So Friday's the earliest, the 16th. What would be a, a good five minutes for you? Has to be after Friday, right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> God, I know Monday's bad 
to. Were you thinking first thing in the morning or in the evening? I am, uh, I'm a model of flexibility <laughs> <laughs> myself. Uh, for me, it's got to be either the very beginning of the day or the end of the day. Yeah, Monday would have to be like at quarter after seven or yeah, in the morning. Okay. That would be fine with me. It's fine with me. Okay. Oh, okay. Quarter after seven. It's fine. We're right here. In the or in the morning. What? In the evening or in the morning. Morning. Okay. Seven fifteen a.m. Monday morning. <laughs> do you want to remind Geraldine or should I do that? You better, because I won't remember to remind her. So. Seven promptly at seven fifteen because there's Joe won't be that. here. Yeah, yep. it's there's only three of us. Although we had talked about doing this at the same time as a right possible let's, let's, interview, so you want to okay. keep those as separate let's, things. Yeah, let's say Monday seven fifteen here, your place for breakfast or <laughs> <laughs> donuts. <laughs> Doesn't somebody or make your donuts? Place? <laughs> Probably here is as easy as anything, isn't it? Okay, sure. Did that work? Yeah. Okay, great. Monday, 7.15. That's Make the sure 19th. Bring the keys, please. Yeah, we don't need to come inside for that. Um, yeah, it needs to be promptly at 7.15. You don't want me knocking on your door for the key <laughs> at 7.15? No. I have to be somewhere at 8, so I'm okay. say yeah. promptly at 7.15. Okay. okay. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, so we did get a resume. Uh, in other business uh, from a candidate for the select board assistant position that's open. Did if, anyone have time to look at that? Mm -hmm. no? Yeah, pretty would, impressive. Would you like to set up a time to talk with this person? Uh, yeah, it would be nice if we had any others, if we could have one evening or mm -hmm. one time where we did a couple um, yep. would be the only thing that right. we, that might save having another meeting to yep. have one. Um, so we could set this in a time frame where there would be time for someone else to apply, not jump right on this. When are you two back in action? I'm coming back Tuesday night before the next meeting. The date being the, the, the 27th? 27th. Yeah. And I, you know, I won't be here in time for a meeting that evening on the 27th. Right, yes. right. Okay. But could this be done, you know, prior we, to the meeting on the 28th? Yeah, could we do it at 5? Or 5.30? I, th I think we're going to want some time for it. 5.15. Okay. How about... Um, Hugh, are you at that meeting on the 28th? 28th? Yes. Yeah, I think it would be nice if we were all here. 515 might be better, yeah, have a little more time. Okay, 515. But if we have other candidates, it would have to be right. earlier too. Right. Exactly. That would be tougher. But 515 yeah. on the 28th, I think that's a good plan. Okay. Um, do you want me to um, contact this applicant and see if that will work for them? Yeah, that's a good place to start too. Okay, yeah. and then I'll just confirm with everyone that and would you, um, it's probably appropriate to send in the updated select board assistant sure. job description. That would be great. And you have that, right? Yeah, I did send it to everyone. Okay, but we did make a revision. Uh, right, yes, so, you're right. So I'll send it to you again. You'll send it to me and I'll forward it to you. Okay, okay. Great. 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 Good. Will you send it to me as well so that I can send it out to people if they request it? Yes. Yes. Great. yes. And it should live somewhere here. We should have job descriptions somewhere. We do. We have a folder. Okay. So you can put it in there as well. Okay. Okay. So do, well, other than that, um, does anyone have any other business? I, I have been working with Sarah Jarvis at yeah. BLCT, yeah. Um, as I was asked. Um, about the parking enforcement in yeah. the village. Mm. Um, and just because it's a long meeting already, but in a nutshell, if they're parked in the travel portion of the road, we can contact the state police and they'll have them towed. 
if it's off the traveled portion of the road, and this is really in a nutshell, there's a lot more to this, but yeah. if, if it's still in the right of way but off the traveled portion, then we can only have the state police move it if it interferes with the maintenance of the road. If Lee is mowing the road or the roadside, or, okay. then, then you can um, have the state police remove it. Um, we would not have the authority to call a record and have them towed. We would have to contact the state police and ask them to have it towed. And, I'm, and that's really in a nutshell, and okay. I'm, still, I'm still working on some things with her. But, yep. Do you um, want to give us an update at our next meeting on this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. Uh, do you, what constitutes, on a road that with no painting, no markings, what constitutes a traveled portion of the road? I would say anywhere in the, uh, boy, Lee would have to give me the width of a road, but in the 18 feet or so that's traveled portion of the road. And, they, and she's highly recommending that we deal with the bed and breakfast or the people that have, that are creating the issue um, directly rather than go to this. Since many of the people are out of town people uh, parking in the way. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad to hear you say that. I mean, I think it's really important to know what the legalities are and to know, you know, to be able to um, have that at our fingertips written, but it seems also like a neighbor's issue. And I'd like to help facilitate that. I, I thought at last meeting you were going to visit with them. No, 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 no. You I, didn't, I didn't see it on the agenda. I don't know if we're talking about it, but so I did. I had, an, I, I had a very nice conversation um, with Natalie, and yeah. you know, Nick came in kind of at the very end, which, like, I was. I essentially gave them an update on the many things that are now going on because one issue led to many issues. Um, and what, what I'll say is that uh, you know, she's my neighbor and I, I, you know, I, I enjoy them as neighbors. Um, and about, you know, we talk very candidly about the parking. Um, so she is going to remove the reference to parking on the other side of the street from her. Thing. Now there was some confusion with that, with, but it's gone. It'll, it'll go away. Um, you know, we talked about the parking, and I, the reason I asked the travel portion is because as we were talking, you know, that kind of came up, and I'm like, well, if you're in the pavement, you're in the pavement. You know, you're not. It's, it's the thing. But what her intent, and she's emphasized it to the people that go there. So this is not dealing with the Airbnb issue. That's a separate issue. This is just parking. I'll just say that she's going to reemphasize with the people that go to you know, park out of the road portion. Um, she's they're very concerned about you know being good neighbors. You know they don't they're not yeah you know, they're 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 very nice. You know they they're not trying to cause an issue. They're trying to solve an issue. Um, you know and again this is just parking parking you know not anything else. Um, and they're. Um, I just, you know, they seek a positive relationship with our neighbors, and they're willing to come here if we have any questions, you know, about them. Uh, so, you know, whatever brought it up, you know, I live right there. I've never really felt obligated to kind of walk over, you know. I mean, you know, we, um, you know, I think, but it's got to be across the board. So, I mean, there I am talking to them, but yet there are other parking situations in the village that it was an awkward situation to be talking to someone about how you have to park your vehicles when there's two cars parked in the road, you know, just at somebody's house, two houses down. That, yeah. And, you know, and again, what I try to express for, you know, you know, my kids, when they have friends over to watch football, you know, they park on the side of the road. You know, I don't, we're not trying to prevent like an evening gathering or something like that, but, um, you know, a three day weekend or a, we get, you know what I'm saying, I, you know, if you call the to tow one, at what point do you not? You know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm trying to say? It's not the only parking issue on West Street. Yeah, you know, so I, I don't think we're trying to say you can't have a gathering and right. park people there for a couple hours, you know. She and Nick are very willing to 
you know, ensure people don't park on the traveled portion of the road. They're very, very willing to do that. Just parking. Well, not, however, you can't tell them they can't park on the road, but yet turn your back or ignore someone else parking on the road. So it has to be addressed in a wider issue than just, you know, yeah. walk in and talk to, you know, one person who's very willing to change it. It's got to be, I guess the whole point is it's got to be fair to everybody. Right. right. You can't have a double standard. So. What happens in the winter when there's snow on the ground? Well, this is the thing. You know, Lee, you know, he and I have talked about this. Uh, he, I want, you know, he is supportive of trying to correct the parking situation in the village. So, what he does is they plow around the cars that are all. Yeah. You know, and I'm gonna have to say it's actually much better than it has been in the past. I mean, most people have figured out ways to get off the road. There's just a few that just stay. You know, either partially in the road and I. I can't believe they haven't hit one with a plow to hit a sometimes. But no, he just plows around them, and then eventually, you know, people shovel it out, they drive away, and then he comes back and clean, you know, there are areas where it kind of goes down to a single lane because he's going around a car on this side, he's going around a car on this side. They shovel them out, they drive away, and then, you know, he comes and plows again and then, you know, refills in everything that, you know, you've cleaned your driveway, but because he went around it, you're doing it again or you're cleaning your driveway three feet into the road. But so so he's plowing, you know, beyond the pavement in other words. No, he's no, he's plowing the road, but, but cars are oh, parked okay. into the road, so he's okay. got to go around that I car. See. Okay. You know, and you know the, you know, these are commercial drivers, they can't afford to you know, they're good so they're gonna go to wide bird. They don't want right. to hit the thing. So um, I think he is supportive of trying to correct the parking situation. Yeah, so that's that's my update from. Great. Great. Any other business? So I'll maybe just take the information that I've gotten from her and bullet it for next meeting. That would be great. Pass it out. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, could we set a date for um, Lee's evaluation, or do you want to think about that and talk to um, Zeke about what makes sense once you talk with you, Steve? Oh, it doesn't matter to me. Whatever, however you want to do it. Um, well, no, it's what you want to do. You I'm, guys are. I'm really busy part. the next two or three weeks. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's really brutal. I mean, I can I can you know. I mean, I can make an appointment. You know, I've got limited time really the next two weeks uh, as well, but I mean, I could certainly try to make a Tuesday or Wednesday to talk to him. And okay, well, I gave Steve, you didn't see it, I gave Steve a little outline of, of what needs to be done, you know, okay. prior to that meeting. So, anyway, we can we can look at that list. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so I just want to make sure it gets on the right agenda. So, why don't I give this back to you and you can hit it with Hugh. And okay, you, good enough. Okay, yeah. Good enough. Okay. All right. All right. Any other business? Okay. Well, I'd like to congratulate Jean Newell for hanging in oh. for this entire <laughs> meeting. <laughs> well, Harold's not home tonight, so I didn't have anything so, better to do. Oh, so pretty the book. And I like you guys. Oh, oh <laughs> Jesus. Well, what was the book? Did she just buttering us up or yeah, something? Do you want to be select board assistant? <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> I don't want to, but it's really sort of like, like having a common <laughs> law spouse. If you come to enough meetings, you know. Pardon? Sort of like having a common law spouse. If you come to enough meetings, you know. Well, I used consider. to come to a lot more, but yeah. I'm getting older. Yeah. No, everybody I know is. Well, yes. I, it's a good. You want, you want to keep going, or you want? I'll to adjourn. adjourn. How's that? I'll second that. All right. All. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 A